In this lesson, we're going to talk about Earth's major biomes. And of course, these are gigantic ecosystems that exist on the planet. And before we do, let's uh, see if we can review uh, what we talked about in previous units about open, closed, and isolated systems. Now, remember that in an open system, an open system can exchange both matter and energy with its outsides or its surroundings. However, a closed system can only exchange energy. The matter is trapped. It can't get in and out, but energy can. So we could consider the whole Earth to be, for example, a closed system. Energy gets in and out, but the matter on Earth is essentially trapped here. And the rare one, of course, is the isolated system that does not exchange either matter or energy with its surroundings. Now, what we want to try to introduce to you here is that ecosystems on the planet are open systems. That is to say, ecosystems exchange both energy and matter with their surroundings. They are not closed, they are open. Both matter and energy can get in and out. Looking at the planet uh, on a whole perspective here, if you want to break it down, we can see that there's about nine major types of biomes. Now, you can go further than this. You can break these down into smaller and smaller uh, pieces. But these are the nine uh, major ones that you can see here, tropical rainforests, uh, savanna or grasslands, etc., etc., and how they're distributed over the planet. Uh, the other thing we also want to point out to you is that uh, these biomes are not equal. In other words, they're not exactly the same size as each other. They take up different portions of the pie on the planet. Another way to consider how uh, biomes work is to do a comparison of what their temperatures are and versus what their precipitation is. So, for example, as you might have guessed, if you've got something like a tropical rainforest here, you can see that it has a pretty high temperature. It also has an awful lot of rainfall as well. Whereas way down here, the tundra, uh, it has a rather low precipitation and it has a low temperature. So temperature and precipitation are the two main ingredients that determine what kind of a biome you're going to have at that location. We'll just briefly look through them one by one. These are also illustrated in your textbook. Here we have the tundra areas on the planet mostly located up in the Arctic, of course. In the climate, they have uh, actually a very small amount of uh, precipitation. And many people say, well, what about all that ice and snow? Yeah, but here's the problem. It, it, it's there permanently. It never melts. So they don't get an awful lot of precipitation, but it stays around. Their average temperature, as you might have guessed, is pretty low, minus 15 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius. They have a very, very short summer. And so in their ground, they have what's called permafrost, where only the very, very top surface of the ground actually thaws out in springtime, and the rest of it remains uh, permanently frozen. So the kinds of plants and animals that you get in this environment, as you can guess, pretty highly adapted to live in a place like a tundra. The taiga, also known as the boreal forest, uh, you might be familiar with this. This is the big coniferous forest that you find in North America and, and the northern Asian continent. And, and here we get a, a bit more uh, uh, of precipitation, and a lot of it is as snow. The average temperature is a bit warmer than the tundra. They typically are, are shown by having uh, cool summers and, and, and rather cold winters. And the kinds of animals that you see in these places are kind of familiar to most of us North Americans, things like the moose, etc. The deciduous forests, these are trees that uh, shed their leaves uh, in the winter time and then, uh, then tough it through winter. Uh, here we have a bit more precipitation. Uh, we have a higher average temperature. And these clearly have very well-defined summers and winters. Uh, the summers can be quite warm. The winters can be a lot cooler. Grasslands, we have a couple of different kinds of grasslands. We have uh, grasslands known as prairie and grasslands known as savanna. Now you can see on these two maps here where they're kind of located. The prairie, of course, in, in, in central uh, North America here, we're quite familiar with this in Alberta, of course. And, and savanna, this is the kind of thing you typically find, especially here in Africa where you find things like uh, zebra, giraffes, and lions, and things like that. Um, their temperature ranges, or their precipitations are kind of similar. They have 25 to 57 centimeters per year, but the real difference between them is their temperature. So if you're a little cooler, you might have prairie. If you're a little warmer, you might end up with a savanna instead. Rainforests, as you might guess, have an awful lot of precipitation, over 200 centimeters per year, and they're pretty warm, uh, 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. They don't really have a cold and a, and, a, and a warm season. What they may have is a really, really wet season and then a dry season. And of course, as you would expect, you find these places in, in tropical locations. The deserts, as you can expect, uh, they have a very low amount of precipitation, 
Uh, their temperature can range. Uh, their days can be incredibly hot. They absorb a lot of radiation. Their nights can be awfully cold. And the reason why is they often have very, very clear skies. So you can see here, for example, uh, this is from Monument Valley uh, down in Arizona. There's no clouds. And over here in the uh, Sahara, there's no clouds. So there's very, very little uh, a reflection of heat back into the Earth. So at nights, they can get very, very cold as that heat radiates away from the surface of the planet. And the last thing we want to bring out, of course, for you to have a look at is the fact that if we just look at Canada itself, we can further divide Canada into several different uh, smaller biomes or ecosystems. And we're going to have a look at some of those. Of course, the one that interests us, perhaps, where we are located, we're kind of on the edge of the Rocky Mountains and the Prairie. Uh, but, of course, we have plenty of other different biomes in Canada as well. And we might want to ask ourselves, how do those work?